Hello and welcome to the Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our review of the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. So firstly, a quick apology to anyone who saw the first run review of the shoe before I took it down. There's some stats wrong in that video. Uh, it was my mistake, very embarrassing. So I took it down and we're back now for the full review of all of the correct information from Puma. So with the Deviate Nitro 2, the Puma really had one thing in my mind they definitely had to fix, which was the heel fit of the shoe. And they have done that. There's a lot more padding there and there's been no heel rub issues with the shoe. But actually they've made a lot more changes than that to the Deviate Nitro 2 that really does make it a substantial update on the original. However, one thing that hasn't changed is the price, which is still £140 in the UK. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's gonna be in the US, but I imagine it will still be $160. The weight is still pretty similar. Puma say it's slightly lighter. My UK size nine weighs 276 grams or 9.7 ounces, uh, which I think is around the same as the DV8 Nitro original. But you know, it's a fairly heavy shoe for a plated training shoe, but it's also not that heavy. It's got a 36.5 millimeter stack at the heel and a 28.5 stack at the forefoot for an eight millimeter drop. And the midsole has been entirely updated from the original, which used Puma's nitrogen-infused nitro foam mainly. In this year, you're getting two layers of foam, and the top layer is now Nitro Elite, which is Puma's nitrogen-infused PIBA-based foam. So it's foam used in their top carbon racers like the DV8 Nitro Elite. And then underneath that layer, you are getting a layer of nitro foam, the nitrogen-infused foam. It's a bit firmer, a bit more stable at the heel there. So you can see that there's a full layer of Nitro Elite there, and then there's nitro foam at the heel, and then there's some nitro foam in the forefoot as well that the Nitro Elite foam wraps around. So you've got Puma's power plate running through the midsole. So it's a carbon composite plate. It's 70% carbon and 30% TPU for a slightly more flexible, comfortable feel than a full carbon plate. Then it comes to the upper, you've got a mesh upper, like I said, with plenty of padding around the heel, a little bit on the tongue there, and then some power tape around the forefoot and the medial side of the shoe. This just adds a little bit more structure and support to the mesh. And on the outsole, you've got Puma Grip in abundance. <laughs> so obviously this is Puma's fantastic outsole, grips very well. It's a really thick layer of it on the shoe concentrated mainly around the forefoot and heel and actually on the heel it's Puma Grip ATR which is a more durable version of Puma Grip designed for things like light trails so you are getting a very good you know outsole here it's going to grip well and last a long time but obviously it does add some weight to the shoe. So the Deviate Nitro 2 fit me very well, true to size. Like I say, I've had no problems with the heel rubbing with the second edition of the shoe. It's a very comfortable fit around the heel. If anything, there's too much padding there because actually it's quite a thick layer and I found at the end of pretty much every run, even in quite mild conditions, that it's soaked with sweat at the back there and all that padding and um, it does take a little while to dry. But yeah, it's a fairly warmish upper, but I don't mind that too much. Uh, and it's certainly an improvement on the original. So I've run 75k in the Puma Deviate Nitro 2 doing a nice mix of general training ranging from very very easy runs and then one long run, I've done a few progression runs, one fairly hard long run and a couple of workouts in it, one on the road and one on the track uh, and yeah I didn't really like it very much at first. <laughs> um, I kind of went into it expecting you know a very nippy fast training shoe with a plate and the ride was quite dull and it just didn't really deliver on that. Like, it was comfortable enough and I did a progression run with it in my second run when I felt you know Quite, it felt that it was easy enough to move through the gears with the shoe, but I wasn't sure it was actually going to be that quick, and I didn't love the ride. I thought it was just slightly unexciting. However, you know, since then, I've really gone on to very much like the shoe. Uh, I've used it for a range of training. I think my doubts that I had around whether it would be good for fast training have been, you know, dispelled. I've done quite a lot of fast running in the shoe, ranging from just, you know, long, steady runs, uh, doing kind of 10 miles in an hour, and then some workouts I did 20 times, 60 on, 30 seconds off, and a track workout running kind of 800 meter reps at a controlled pace with 400 meters recovery not that much slower so I think I ended up doing about 6k you know, in under 330 per k pace in the shoe and it's certainly got a lot more pace than I thought it did originally uh, I think it's partly because the ride isn't that exciting that I wasn't sure about the pace of the shoe the, you're not getting a big bouncy propulsive ride despite you know having these super foams in the midsole it's quite controlled it's quite stable it's comfortable um, and it's just not, not all that lively but the pace is definitely there when you try and run fast in it you will run fast in it but I don't think you get that much feel for how fast you're running. I think a lot of that is down to the thickness of the outsole, which mutes the ride quite a lot, um, but doesn't really slow the shoe down that much. So I do think it's a very versatile option. And it was comfortable for easy runs as well, but it doesn't feel like the nippiest shoe, even if it does largely deliver when it comes to speedy sessions. Obviously the outsole does mute the ride slightly, but the big plus of it is that you can take the shoe kind of anywhere. It's so versatile, I think 
two of the speedy runs I did in the shoe. One, I just decided to come back via the canal because I knew that the grip would be there. So running 60 second reps on the canal towpath was absolutely fine, like on a slightly loose surface. I got plenty of grip. I could run as if I was running on the road. And then I did my 10 mile steady on an old disused railway where, again, I just had no worries about the grip. It's just the kind of terrain that's not that rough at all, but I wouldn't want to go and run in it in like my carbon shoes or maybe I wouldn't even want to take the endorphin speed on it just because I'd worry about durability and grip and sliding a little bit. With this shoe, you just don't really have to think about it. It's a very you know relaxing shoe in that way. You can just pull it on and go run anywhere because the grip is very much there with that Puma grip outsole. Uh, and that, yeah, that does add to the versatility. Like I say, it mutes the ride a bit. I think it does take away a bit of the speed of the shoe because it adds some weight, but the trade-off here is that you're getting a more versatile training shoe and this is what it's built to be. This isn't like a racer training Trainer. you know this one, endorphin speed is a really great all-rounder shoe that's tilted towards fast running and this is an all-rounder shoe that is tilted towards training like it really can handle a lot of different speeds and a lot of different terrains and it's going to be comfortable for all of it it's not stripped back in a way that might lead you to worry about a lack of grip or a lack of support that kind of thing it's stable it's comfortable and it has speed when you want it so aside from the fact that maybe there are slightly more speedy options, I'd say the other concern I have that it's probably comfort over very long hard runs. So if you're hitting towards 25, 30K, I think you're probably gonna get a bit more comfort by using a you know a more traditional cushioned trainer uh, without any kind of plate in the midsole. I think this will do the job quite well, but yeah, I think it'll probably be slightly more unforgiving than a you know a more cushy shoe if you're just going out at relaxed paces for those long runs. But in terms of day-to-day -day easy runs, you know, about an hour, that kind of thing, it's perfectly good for those. And again, you're getting that grip, so you can take those easy runs to the trail like I often do them in the forest um, and you're getting a reliable grip here for most of the year you know still not going to go into the very deepest mud in the winter but most of the time the shoe is going to be fine on light trails park trails canal towpaths that kind of thing So I really come around to the Deviate Nitro 2 during my testing of it. Um, I think if we're going in with a very speed focused mindset, it just feels a bit heavy and maybe not you know, the poppiest shoe you could have there for your training. But once you kind of readjust that mindset and really understand what the shoe is for, it's very much a training shoe first and you know a speed shoe second, it really does do a great job. It's very versatile, it is quick enough for your sessions, even if you'll be working a bit harder in it compared to some shoes. And then it's great for taking your runs everywhere because the outsole is so good for a road running shoe. I think it does really work very well as a training partner to a carbon shoe as a result because you can do so much of your training in it. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, but it's more comfortable, grips better. And then for key speed work sessions, when you know really want to hit some high speed, you can use your you know racing shoe and then use it for racing as well. I don't think I'd want to go and do a lot of racing in the Deviate Nitro 2. Uh, I think it is much more of a training shoe, but it does work as almost the perfect training partner because of the way it's set up with that outsole. The ride isn't the most exciting. You're not going out for everyday runs, you know, getting a big amount of bounce being that joy or a very smooth rock or anything like that but it has just got the job done on every run I've, tried, I've done in it from easy runs to fairly long hard runs to track sessions and that's kind of what you want for a training shoe I think it's very much the kind of shoe that over time you warm to more and more and start to really love it and I think that's certainly the case if you had a better colorway than black because you know black's a bit dull it's very hard to fall in love with a black shoe I think I think it's certainly a great option like I say for people who do a lot of their training on mixed terrain like if you are someone who tries to get to a park or tries to get to a canal or you know a forest near you when you're doing easy runs or even some you know mild sessions then it's a great option because this is really where it stands out against the competition because of that outsole. Endorphin Speed 3 is a poppy shoe. It's a livelier shoe. It's a lighter shoe. I find it easier to hold fast paces over in long distances in that shoe because of the way the rocker is set up. But the outsole is just okay. Like it's a road running shoe, clearly. Whereas this is a road running shoe, but you have no concerns about going and doing your session on the canal or hitting a disused railway like I did. Uh, you can really rely on this to grip well and just not worry about where your run takes you. And it's nice to not be on the roads all the time, obviously, if you can get off them from time to time. I do think the Endorphin Speed is, you know, it's like more impressive shoe. Certainly if you're gonna use it as a trainer racer, the Speed is the def definitely the better racing shoe of the pair. It's got more pace in it. But if you look, if you have got your carbon shoe sorted and you're just looking for a reliable trainer that can do a lot of different stuff, the Deviate Nitro 2 is a bit cheaper than the Speed. It's got a better outsole. It will deliver on all the runs you're gonna use it for. So it's very much a solid update to the line. Uh, it fixes the heel rub issue. It, changes the outsole a little bit to make it more of a training focus shoe i'd say and i think it's a very strong option now uh, i think puma could possibly still tweak the shoe like the outsole i've been praised singing its praises the whole review but it's very thick they probably could shave a little bit off that and maybe bring the weight down to around 250 something like that 250 grams in my size and then you'd have an even better option that's more versatile for that quick stuff and it'll probably have a bit more ground feel as well because you're not getting it so dulled by that outsole but all in all i think it does its job very well indeed and while it's not as explosive and lively as you might expect given the materials used and the specs on paper 
it is very reliable and a shoe that's very relaxing to pull on knowing you can go and do almost any kind of run on almost any kind of terrain and it's going to serve you really very well. So guys, that's our review of the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments below. Have you tried this shoe? Did you use the original shoe? Um, please do like and subscribe, ring the little bell, and we'll see you next time.